This is Twit. All right, we are back from the break, and I am excited to be joined by Jeff Carlson of CNET, who recently went on a little bit of a trip to test some new uh, functionalities, I guess, uh, some new, a new service uh, from, from T-Mobile. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hey, great. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. So let's start by talking about your piece. Uh, it's titled, I Tested T-Mobile's Satellite Service. The hardest part was finding a dead zone. <laughs> so can you start first by telling us where you went to conduct this test and uh, kind of what you were aiming to find out? Yeah. So uh, T-Satellite requires basically that you don't have a cellular signal and uh, it's getting harder and harder to find areas that don't have cellular coverage. So in my case, I live in Seattle, so it's just blanketed. So I ended up driving two and a half hours uh, northeast to the North Cascades. And even like this is where we tend to go camping and had to drive even a little bit further than that to uh, Lake Diablo. And at that point, the bars finally disappeared and got the little satellite indicator and knew that then I could finally test this out. Because if you have any kind of Seattle, if you have any kind of, excuse me, cellular coverage, uh, you can't use the satellite. You can do a demo test, but you can't actually really use it. So needed to, needed to get away from it all just to test it. Absolutely. Now we know satellite texting it's not new. Apple and Google have offered similar features for a little while now. Mm -hmm. uh, but based on your hands-on experience, what makes T-Mobile's T-Satellite service feel different, if it does, from those other options? So the big difference is that they're trying to make this as seamless and frictionless as possible. So when you're using, say, an Apple device and you're using Apple's built-in service, you have to basically activate it, there's a little helper that will walk you through setting up a connection and you're basically pointing up to a satellite and making sure that you have a satellite connection. And then once that connection is solid, then you can text. With the T-Mobile service, they're using Starlink. So a lot more satellites flying up above. And so what happens, what should happen and what happened when I tested this is I turned on my phone and basically was connected. So there wasn't that little dance to go through. It just knew that even though I was outside of cellular coverage, there were T-Mobile satellites that it could latch onto, and it just did it. I mean, I don't want to say that, you know, it just works, <laughs> but at first, like, really, it, it just worked. Nice. Now, you do describe the performance as mostly like normal <laughs> texting, but uh, sometimes slower. Can you talk about that experience? And what was the speed like for sending texts versus sending a photo over the satellite connection? Yeah, well, it's going to be slower just by the nature of it, because you're you're bouncing data up to a satellite versus to like a, a cellular tower or a ground station or something. So, I found that sometimes texts would be like you would get a little bit of a lag sending, a little bit of lag somebody replying. But then there were other times when literally it just seemed like I wouldn't have even thought that I was connected to a cellular connection. I'm sorry, to a satellite connection. Uh, I was texting with my wife and it was just going back and forth, back and forth. Now, the, the image portion of it, right now that's only available on Android. And that is using the MMS service to send uh, images and probably like, I think you can send small audio files and things like that. So I snapped a picture of where I was and I sent it to my wife. And that took about two and a half minutes to, to go through, which like, it's not terrible, but it's certainly a lot slower than what we're used to. And then I checked on her phone later and either the messages app on Android or maybe something in between had reduced the resolution of that. So it's, it wasn't sending the full, uh, I don't know what it was, 20 megapixel image that the Samsung Galaxy captured. But still, the quality was perfectly decent and I was able to say, look, this is the pretty place that I ended up. Nice. Uh, and, I, you know, kind of going a little bit further into the the testing um you did talk about kind of running into some confusing moments knowing whether you were actually connected to the satellite which i've experienced before with with the iphone uh mm -hmm. using its satellite feature um 
could you just talk about any of the challenges that you were facing as you, you know, continued to have to drive out for, oh, are we there? Is it cellular <laughs> still? Uh, what was that like? Well, it was interesting because I think some of this is as much an interface issue as, as maybe a technology issue. Mm. So, uh, the, there are two things, basically. Uh, on the Android phone, and maybe this is because this was a, a Samsung S25 Ultra, so it's got like a really high resolution screen. But there's a little menu bar icon that shows a satellite and it's got like little bars indicating like the strength of the connection. And that is very tiny in the menu bar. And so at one point when I was texting, there basically was no connection. Like it, it lost the, the satellite connection, even the, the T satellite. And I couldn't tell because basically when it's connected, there are very thin black lines. When it's disconnected, there are very thin dark gray lines. And so there was no indication to tell me, oh, well, you're not connected other than um, I think once I texted, there was a little status that said, like, uh, you know, waiting to connect or something like that. So there wasn't anything that just sort of said, hey, buddy, you no longer have a connection. Maybe you need to do something about this. On the Apple side, when you're using Apple's service, it basically, you know, shows you in the dynamic, uh, the, the dy dynamic island. Mm -hmm. Uh, it'll show you that you are connected. There's a little green dot that indicates your status. And it's really obvious to tell that, hey, you are now connected. So I did two things. So one, I had the, the Samsung running just T-Mobile. And then I had my iPhone 16 Pro that was running uh, AT&T the, as the primary provider. But I had also loaded the T-Mobile beta as a secondary eSIM. And this is part of what T-Mobile is trying to do because it, even if you're not a T-Mobile customer, you can sign up for the T-Satellite service and run it basically as like a secondary, secondary service. So when I had lost connection using the, the T-Satellite service, the iPhone automatically switches to the next best thing, which would be Apple's service. And that shows a little dark colored just satellite icon, no little beams, but just a little satellite icon in the menu bar. So I mistook that to mean, oh, well, I still have a satellite connection. When in fact, what that really means is satellite is available. And specifically, uh... Apple's satellite service is available. And for some reason, I, I don't know if this is a glitch, and I should also point out, I mean, in full fairness, uh, this was done three days before the actual launch. So technically, this was all still in beta, but I didn't notice that I needed to take the steps to kind of, to reconnect or to, to connect to Apple service. So there was a little bit of just like confusion there on my part because I couldn't tell the status of things. That makes sense. And in terms, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, somebody asked a great question in the chat. Um, this, of course, is talking about using the T satellite to send messages and photos. Is there a satellite phone option or is this strictly limited here as it is now to, uh, to texts? Yeah, right now this is strictly limited to text. Um, I don't know if they've actually like promised phone stuff in the future, but it's definitely something that I think is technically possible. I know AT&T has talked about uh, that as a possibility in the future. I think once a lot of this stuff gets nailed down, we'll probably see that. Now, what T-Mobile is doing is in October, they're opening up a service so that other apps can use the data stream. Uh, because, you know, the, the biggest limitation here is you just can't push a lot of data back and forth between the satellites. But they're allowing developers to connect to an API so that, for example, one of their examples is the All Trails app. You can get actual connection and, and be able to see the the mapping and that sort of data as you're out hiking outside of cell coverage. Um, or maybe you use WhatsApp instead of messages. And so like WhatsApp could incorporate that as a feature, but be able to send it through the satellite. Because otherwise the phone is 
basically saying, look, satellite is a no go for uh, Instagram or TikTok. Like, like none of those things are gonna are gonna have access to it for now because there's just not the bandwidth for it. That makes sense. Um, I also want to ask one of the most interesting aspects that you note works on most modern phones and satellite service working for people who don't use T-Mobile as their primary carrier. Can you talk about the significance of that and how it works? Yeah, definitely. So uh, one of the things that is interesting about this, not, not just the fact that it, it connects automatically, but because T-Mobile is using the Starlink satellite network, they've actually set it up so that uh, T-Mobile is using like a small slice of cellular bandwidth. So you don't have to have a phone that specifically has satellite hardware. And I think this is part of the reason why once it sees that there's a satellite connection available, it can just connect to it because the phone basically sees it as, oh, well, this is like a, a, a low slice of network that I already understand. So instead of needing, say, an iPhone 15 Pro or iPhone, I can't remember, 14 Pro maybe was the first one that introduced, introduced this. Instead of needing something that has specific hardware, as long as you have something, uh, T-Mobile says it, something in the last four years. So I, I, I think that's like the iPhone 13 and later, then it should be able to work with the service without you re needing like a specific model specific hardware because it's basically just tapping into cellular technology at that point it just happens to be much higher up one of my favorite parts of this is you talking about meeting a couple from a rural area with poor cell coverage uh sort of broad broadly speaking how do you think this technology kind of bridges the gap from being a neat feature that a hiker uses uh to being an essential service for for people in remote communities. Yeah, um, I could not have planned this interaction if I had wanted to. Uh, the, these people literally just came up and that, you know, because of course I'm standing there juggling phones, looking yeah. very, you know, confused or techy or whatever. And it turned out they live in like a small town, uh, Northern Idaho, right near the Canadian border. And they explained that, you know, they just have no cellular coverage or it's very patchy. And also when it comes to other internet access, you can get, um, you know, some uh, landlines and uh, terrestrial internet access, but when the power goes out, you're just cut off. So having something like this, uh, a, I mean, top of mind is in case of emergencies. And actually, T-Mobile turned on T satellite early for people who were affected by the floods in Texas. So that's mm. like 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 a good real world example. If you can't get to the regular infrastructure, this is one way that you could get emergency messages out. But also not necessarily like calling for first responders, but to send a text to say your family in California and saying, look, the storm just came through. We don't have a power or internet, but uh, we're all safe. I think just in terms of general communication, even in areas that we're not talking about emergencies, just real rural areas, this would allow people to make some of those essential communications, even if it's just, you know, you're, you're uh, planning to meet up with someone, you're scheduling a delivery of uh, farm equipment or like all of these sort of normal interactions that we take for granted when we're under this cellular umbrella, this opens that up and you don't have to think, oh, I need to communicate something to somebody and now I need to drive, you know, 20, 30 minutes in order to yeah. be able to do that or even, you know, to drive 40 minutes until I do have cell coverage. So it can, I think, make a big impact. It's not going to give you, you know, full blazing speed internet access. That's probably something that will come later on down the line. But it just, it gives you that connection that is either, you know, strictly for communication's sake or for more essential needs. And my final question for you, kind of looking ahead, you say it's easy to see a future where we don't, I mean, you're kind of talking about there, where you don't have mm -hmm. to think about how the data is delivered, that it just, it gets there and that's all there is to it. Uh, based on this test, how close do you think we are to that future? And uh, what do you think are the next steps for this technology to actually get there? That is a good question. I think we are still in the first steps. Um, maybe, 
I guess more technically, maybe like the third steps, right? Because okay. uh, you know, Apple and and uh, uh, I think uh, Verizon, Samsung, like setting up the ability to connect to a satellite the way we've been doing it. That was kind of the first step. Like, hey, this is possible, and you don't need a big honking satellite phone, right? Now you can do it just with the phone that you have. And so now this takes us one more step, which makes it a little bit easier, removes some friction, makes it more ubiquitous so that you are making an easy connection and not having to really think about it. So I can see this getting easier. And I'm sure that, you know, say five, six, seven, eight steps down the line, then we're going to have better bandwidth, better um, hopefully improve latency. I know uh, AT&T is talking about putting satellites up that will, you know, deliver dramatically more bandwidth. And right now, what's actually up there is still really limited. Because I think up until now, like, this has not been a need. And now mm -hmm. suddenly they're demonstrating, well, this is a need. This is a market. Uh, this is something that actually T-Mobile is charging for. Apple said that they weren't going to charge for a couple of years. So we don't know what their pricing is. But this is something that becomes more viable and is also more important to, again, first responders and uh, those sorts of situations. Absolutely. Well, Jeff Carlson, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, if uh, folks would like to keep up to date with what you're doing, mm -hmm. where's a good place for them to go to do that? Uh, go to jeffcarlson.com or go to cnet.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.